Hello and welcome to our first ever World GNM Day celebration. My name is Dr. Sarah. I'm a homeopath consultant and GNM follower. Today marks the day when so many teachers from around the world have come onto one platform so we can raise awareness on GNM. I believe this is the first time a program like Search has been running for continuous 24 hours. I strongly suggest you take advantage of such programs. As a holistic practitioner, I have a role towards my patients to make them understand about the illness in a most holistic way. There is a reason why have, they've chosen holistic over conventional medicine. The seeking for answers which they are unable to get from the Western medicine doctors. Our responsibility towards them is to make them aware of what they are capable of. And yes, they can have a life free of illness. I hope to refine my practice by the concept of GNM. By training my patients and helping them seek the knowledge, I can gain that confidence and trust from them. When I speak to my patients and way before starting the consultation, explain the reason behind the illness, they're quite shocked. Uh, I have been called psychic many times as well. Even my daughter's friends, they've named me as a psychic and I'm like, whoa, it's not me being psychic. I just have this basic knowledge of GNM. It is a big responsibility on our shoulders to spread the knowledge of GNM and make the life worth living. And this is why the Global GNM Group was formed. Dr. CJ Vargas is the brain behind this movement. He has done a tremendous job in making this group a success. We have members from all around the globe, from medical doctors to non-medical professionals. The primary objective behind this group was to facilitate understanding of human mechanism, of how body works, through his group, he wants to spread the authentic discovery of Dr. Hammer and raise the awareness and trace, train more GNM teachers for new generation. We're fortunate to have a discovery like such, and it's only to the sheer dedication and hard work by Dr. Hammer. We are lucky to have teachers amongst us who are trained directly by Dr. Hammer. Let me give you a brief insight about his life and work. Dr. Hammer was a trained physician from Germany. It was at the shocking death of his son that he discovered GNM. After the death of his son, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Now, this diagnosis came as a shock as he was a relatively healthy man. He started putting the pieces together to find some sort of correlation between the two incidents. Being the genius he was, he collated data from his cancer patients. As a driving force, the death of his son inspired him to undergo the studies. He spoke with many patients where he was working to find out that those suffering from testicular cancer had suffered some sort of tragic loss in their life and this made him curious and led to more research. With all the data he has collected and the researches he did on the scans of this patient, he find, found that kind of some correlation between the body and the brain and the emotions. So. Um, he did some scans on his patient and find that there was some kind of lesions like a ring formation in the particular part of the brain. And uh, this led him to think more about the re role behind the shock the patient has suffered and formation of the lesion on the brain and the symptoms that it was producing in the body. With lots of investigations, researches, Dr. Hammer came to know that human body are miraculously designed to heal, repair and regenerate. And that is how the first biological law was discovered. This first biological law states that every disease is actually a program that runs alongside your psyche, brain and organ when you receive some kind of an unexpected conflict shock. Now in response to this shock, your body starts producing some changes so it can adapt to that challenging environment. This shows that your body is creating meaningful changes to adapt in response to the stressful change in the environment. And this is a self-protection mechanism. That means your body is protecting its microorganism, every part, every cell of your body, so it can adapt to the outside environment. For example, consider having a knee injury. And due to that injury, there is a swelling and inflammation in that part. Now, what we try to do is... We try to take some medication or we apply some stuffs on that area so that we can uh, reduce the swelling and inflammation. But this delays the healing process. The healing process is where there is the presence of the extra fluid and the white blood cells, which helps to repair that area quicker. 
And once we know the root cause behind such kind of inflammation or swelling, we know that there is nothing wrong with it. It's just your body is trying to heal the process, making the process faster, and hence the mystery gets solved. In response to the trauma, your body will start preparing for a physiological changes. Now, these physical changes are due to the activated sympathetic nervous system and a chronic stress response. So, uh, on receiving this kind of trigger, um, the body will run a special program which is run simultaneously in your psyche, brain and body. It's wonderfully designed. And it's quite amazing when you think about it as it's motivated for survival. Symptoms like pain, inflammation, they're quite inconvenient and painful. But these are the biological process to repair the damage which are done during the conflict. Similarly, plants, animals, they undergo the same process. On receiving any unexpected conflict, their body will express in the same way and respond in the form of some sort of ailments. For example, if a pet has lost his owner, he will su suffer from separation conflict and display the symptoms. To understand how this process works, let me give an example of being chased by a lion. We know it's dangerous when we have been chased by a lion and our body will sense that danger and will try to prepare from each and every cells and organs to flee from that danger. It will run a special program to keep you safe. You notice your heart beating faster, you're sweating, there's more energy with the rush of adrenaline, even loss of appetite, as who will be worrying about the food when in danger? Similarly, in daily situation, the role of this lion is given to your boss. So I don't mean to be rude here, but you know what happens is on uh, not completing the monthly targets and the thought of being disgraced is going to give you some anxiety attacks, palpitations, sleepless night. Now this is an example for flight response. In fight response, think of a hedgehog who raises his spikes when in danger so he can protect himself. A body is quite remarkable when you think about it. Day and night, it's keeping you alive, even without thinking about how your heart is working or your digestion system is processing. And subconsciously, it's scanning the environment to check for any possible threats. And once that environment is safe, it goes into a relaxation mode, where your body is into a parasympathetic repair mode. And as a human, what we try to do is we just try to stop this process, which is a natural process, and actually suppress it. So the key to the healing would be that we understand our, how our body works and let our body repair by itself. Now we have the general overview of what GNM is. I would like to discuss the impact of GNM theory on our mental health. What is the role of GNM when it comes to mental health? Does new modern era give any value to this theory? In the world of generation where you see rise in cases in ADHD, OCD, psychosis, autism, and many more mental conditions, GNM has a scientific explanation for all. We all have moments where we create environment for ourselves so that we can feel safe. Mental health is not different to physical health. And as our body understands that we can't ignore the fact that if someone is suffering from mental health problems, we'll be able to apply the theory of GNM. Five laws apply to mental health condition as well. There's a conflict active phase. There's a healing phase. There's a presence of unexpected distressing event and a brain and organ correlation. Mental health, according to Dr. Hammer, are due to constellation called schizophrenia constellation. And constellation means something like a group of similar things. Similarly, in schizophrenia constellation, there is more than one conflict involved. Do you think a person can suffer from more than one trauma in their life? Absolutely. That's possible even if you have suffered those trauma maybe decades apart. And the conflict is still active. Similarly, in schizophrenia constellation, a person has suffered from more than one conflict here yeah? and because there is involvement of right and left brain hemisphere this conflict if they keep on getting active at some moment due to some event the person will go into a stage of schizophrenic constellation now depending on the intensity of the conflict the person will show the symptoms When you have a negative memory, you store in a part of a brain and when the similar event happened, you reinforce the same conflict, making it a bigger conflict. Rewiring your brain to think differently about the same situation will have a lesser impact on your body. Like looking at a glass, 
if it's half full or half empty, depending on each individual. Some may say it's half full or maybe half empty. When a person suffers from one conflict, his mental state changes on undergoing second conflict. And if the first conflict is still active, there's a burden on the mental state. This makes it difficult for the person to cope with the situation um, and the person may never come out of this conflict if the overload is not toned down. So depending on the conflict, there will be changes on the physiological level that acts as an extra support. These two conflicts can occur simultaneously or in a sequence. There is no hard and fast for a rule for uh, conflicts to occur in schizophrenic constellation. Uh, maybe the first conflict have happened as a young age due to the loss of loved one or due to self-devaluation. And the second conflict could have taken place years later. But it is the second conflict that triggers the constellation. And if the person is out of one conflict, he is free from constellation. These conflicts in schizophrenic constellation can be of same nature. They can have two different aspects and the constellation can be permanent okay uh, maybe because the because a person is in a conflict active phase all the time or if a person has temporarily resolved with one of the conflicts or maybe both of the conflicts but has relived or his tracks have been recurred again so he can go into that same mental state and or he could re reactivate this constellation after the two conflicts, even if one conflict is resolved, the patient will no longer be in a schizophrenic constellation. And at that point, the corresponding organ will start healing as well. It is not the chemical imbalances that causes a person to go into a depression or anxiety or any behavioral changes. It is the role of an autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system have a big role to play here. Sympathetic nervous system, it responds to any panic or sufferings and will go into a fight or a flight mode. And parasympathetic nervous system, it will respond to if a person is very happy, delightful, is confident and will make the person calm. Now, this prolonged sympathetic uh, nervous system role is cause of a sympathetic cotonia in a person. And this is where the person will be having a prolonged state of a fear, a fight or flight response. Due to the release of epinephrine from the adrenal gland, the person is in a state of high blood pressure, um, loss of appetite, profuse sweating. And in sympathetic otonia, because of the dominance of this sympathetic nervous system, the person will always be in this state. In a conflict active phase, uh, the person is already in a sympathetic otonia phase, which means his sympathetic nervous system are on high rise. And... Uh, because of the fight and flight response, his body is going through changes uh, of high blood pressure, sweating, as I explained in my previous slide. Uh, in schizophrenic constellation, the person is suffering with double sympathetic sympathetic cotonia. You can imagine how that's going to be. Uh, there's like exaggeration of all the symptoms, which is in normal sympathetic cotonia phase. So in that situation, if a person is then given medications like aspirin or maybe cortisone, uh, these are all going to add up to his mental condition and the feeling of nervousness and any stimulants he's been taking. They are they're going to exaggerate his mental condition. I would like to discuss the role of schizophrenic constellation in elderly people, uh, especially those living in care homes where they suffer from hallucination, withdrawal from reality, fantasy, delusion. Now, as we are all aware, these are the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. Isn't it obvious that people living in care homes, these elderly people who are in care homes who have been abandoned by their children, they're living in their own safe zone. They think all the symptoms of hallucination, delusion is that way of the body uh, protecting them from the environment they are in. And they are responding, the body is responding in this manner. I believe children can suffer from schizophrenic constellation as well. Anyone can suffer from it actually. And uh, as we have heard of uh, cases in children where they make an imaginary friend, um, they are suffering with hallucinations of some kind of uh, ghost or environment where they feel themselves not to be safe and 
um, isn't it um, something to be thought about that maybe they have gone through a trauma in the young age or like an abuse or something of a bad relation with their parents or their siblings which has caused their body to uh, feel in a way of safeness like the hallucinating a friend and having been loved by someone else from the reality now is the time to bring that change to understand your body your signs and symptoms they're nothing but the way your body is telling look i'm healing please do not disturb but what we do we worry as soon as we see those ailments you need to know how your environment is and the impact it can cause on your body by toning down that impact from your surrounding you'll enjoy a better life free from disease I wish I could have understood the theory of GNM long time before and I hope for our future generation to learn this theory for a better self. Thank you for listening to me. I hope this presentation was of some benefit and the first step in understanding GNM.